Good evening, my lovelies. A request came in through Facebook. I had posted a picture of myself outside in the big, bright, wonderful sunlight uh, a couple of days ago, and um, I was wearing no makeup, and someone had requested, actually a couple of people liked the response, about doing a skincare routine that I typically go through, and I'm not sure how much interest that might have among those, but I'm also going to start getting ready for a video filming, so I thought, meh, why not make a little bit of an extra content and see if anybody is interested. Um, I don't feel like I have the best skin in the world. I think that it's a subject that, as we age, it becomes a common concern among, especially us ladies, men as well, uh, or anybody, any other categories. Um, but skincare is something that I think is it's a subject that we are all mindful of at some point in our lives, so this is what I do. This is what I do on a fairly regular basis, and sometimes I rotate between different types of treatments for my face, and sometimes I'm just kind of lazy about it. I'll let you decide where this interest uh, strikes you at all. Today is kind of a chaotic day. We have some construction going on outside, so you're going to hear some abstract noises as well as I have the recording room door open so I have two kitty cats that want to partake in this, my little girls, my Coco and my Nimbus. So they are both, um, they're gonna both do their thing in here too. So if you hear them in the background, um, yeah, this is, this is not full ASMR. <laughs> uh, so starting with my basic skincare routine, the biggest things for myself that I try to focus on is making sure my skin is clean. Um, regular exfoliation, chemical exfoliation is my preference, and sunscreen. I am big, 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 big on sunscreen. Um, genetically, I'm pretty fair-skinned. I I tan okay, but I don't really like sun. It makes my skin have some discoloration areas, and I've had some acne scars and other related scars like chicken pox scars in certain areas of my face that I would like to improve upon as well as now I'm almost in my late 30s, kind of on the late-ish side of my 30s and some of my big concerns are crow's feet, discoloration, sagging skin, collagen, loss, things like that too. So first thing I always want to do is make sure that my skin is super, super clean and I wash my face in the shower with um, something that is a salicylic acid uh, cleansing foam. It's kind of gentle, but it's also a mild exfoliation. And then as soon as I get out of the shower, I apply a couple of different things. I think that right now my favorite, which I've been using for a couple of weeks, is from The Ordinary. And you're going to see a lot of products from The Ordinary just because I really like them. They're cheap-ish, and um, they tend to have pretty good results within a short period of time. Your skin pretty much re fully cycles in about 28 days, so anytime that you're applying something new, you won't see the immediate results of that. But the biggest one that I've been using right now is the Buffet. And this is a peptide-based serum, and to the best of my understanding, peptide serums are typically a, uh, a serum that you put on that helps the, you know, I'm not going to get scientific about it, I don't know that much, um, but this has been pretty good. I've noticed in the last two weeks at making the skin feel and look a little bit more refreshed. So I will usually use this right after a shower. Uh, it does not have any oils in it, it does have water in it, so anytime that I'm using a water-based serum, I will occasionally rotate between two other water-based serums that I can include, and a lot of it depends on the weather. If it's winter, if it's very dry, I use a hyaluronic acid and a B5 serum along with that, as well as a niacinamide and zinc serum as well. Niacinamide is one of the things that, that is commonly recommended for discoloration, scars, hyperpigmentation, uh, and hyaluronic acid is something that's typically recommended when you have, when you want to retain the moisture in your skin. So as we age, we do tend to lose a little bit more of that collagen production, so moisture into the skin will help regenerate, but it'll also help to hold that moisture in a lot better. And those are both by The Ordinary. 
and I will occasionally also use a serum that I had gotten from Shop Miss A. It was a dollar. Um, I really, really liked this when it was available on their website. It has been sold out ever since I originally purchased it. But it's a very light water-based serum that has all three of those, or two of those ingredients, uh, niacinamide and uh, hyaluronic acid, but it also has vitamins B, C, and E. E is, again, a good moisturizer. It can come in various forms. Um, I also have it in an oil-based form, and my skin does not really respond as well to oils just because I'm naturally a really oily girl. So that's kind of my morning-ish routine, and then in the afternoon um, I rotate between two common peels or exfoliants. The first one and the most common one is probably the glycolic acid toning solution. You put this on a cloth, you put it on a cotton pad, and you press it into your skin. It works really good for my hormonal acne that I sometimes get, and just Generally, it does a very good job at making your skin a little bit more receptive to serums that you might apply afterwards. And then once or twice a week, I will also use the AHA 30% to BHA 2% from The Ordinary. It's a, It's got this really nice reddish color, and I use this once or twice a week. Put it on your face. Coco! This is what I meant about recording with cats. <laughs> It is, um, no, no, don't play with the camera. No, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I love her to pieces, but boy, she is just a, just a little misfit. Look at you, you're such a troublemaker. You wanna come here? You wanna say hi to everybody? Anyhow, um, no, not on my planters, not on my planters, honey. Those are my seeds. To, ow! She doesn't like being told no. Um, it's a peel that you put on your face for 15 to 30 minutes. I usually do 30 minutes just because my skin's pretty tolerant of it. And then when you wash it off, you have a very, very nice base for your skin. Hi, Coco. Well, she wants to play so bad right now. Uh, you have very good base. I usually do this in the afternoon. And I will typically combine it with more of an oil-based treatment. I use a Gran, Gran, Gran Active Retinoid, 2% uh, in squalene oil. And I also will combine that with an organic cold-pressed rosehip oil. And Girly, you are being very rude right now. There's people that are going to see this. Oh, she's in a bad mood right now. You're stepping on my computer, hun. Are you turning off my mic? Please don't do that. Oh, no. <sighs> I'm going to go get her a toy so that she will go away. Hey, look. Look, a Q-tip. You see this Q-tip? Oh, you see it? Here we go. Whew. Okay, she didn't break anything. <laughs> um... Okay, just making sure I'm still recording there. Cats aside, um, I usually have a oil base or some sort of a deep moisturizing treatment that I use on my skin overnight. And retinoids, retinol, retin-A is something that is usually recommended for wrinkles and just skin reproduction, skin cell reproduction. And it also, when you're going to bed, you want to make sure, well, I want to make sure that I have really good moisture penetration into my skin because I'm trying to stay younger looking when I can. Um, when I don't go with something that's an oil base, I will usually use a moisturizer like their uh, natural moisturizing factors, uh, HA, and this is probably my all-time favorite moisturizer. It's not an oil base. It feels fantastic on the skin. It's not tacky. It dries down really nice. It doesn't leave any flashback on my skin, and that's probably my favorite moisturizer. If I am working outside or if I am just... Working, I work in an office most days, so I'm not exposed to a whole lot of UV rays, but I'm also really big on sunscreen, so in the summertime when I start doing a lot more gardening and such outside, uh, this is probably one of my really, really important factors is I lather myself up in, in this pretty heavily. But it also, it's kind of greasy. I don't 
like using a whole lot of it, so if I can, if I'm going to be working inside in an office most of the day, I usually will go without this. <laughs> so, that is, that is pretty much my skincare routine. I know I have like a lot of products that I will use, but I don't do it religiously and I'm not, um, it sounds like it's a lot, but I think in the morning my primary focus is serums uh, and sunscreen when needed, and then in the afternoon I do serums that are a little bit more oil-based, heavy, moisturizing, so when I get all shiny and I look like I have oil on my face, it's probably at a time period when not many people are going to see me and think, oh man, she just looks like an oil fest. Um, but I have a lot of oil production here, and when we're working now with masks on our face for 8 to 10 hours a day, that makes that problem a little bit worse, so I don't. Um, one of the other two, no, two of the other things I have been using a lot lately have been a cream that I put under my eyes. It has caffeine in it, as well as the ordinary say, caffeine solution, and you just put it under your eyes a little bit. It makes the discoloration for me under my eyes and in some of the areas where I have a little bit of hyperpigmentation. Uh, it makes it a little bit less pronounced, so everything looks pretty balanced. So, that being said, I'm going to start applying some makeup. I have, I'm inside, I am not wearing sunscreen right now. I have serum, I think I have just a very light serum of this on my face as it is, and a little bit of the caffeine under my eyes to help get rid of the dark circles under my eyes, but I typically will wash a blender makeup thingy and I don't wear foundation often. Um, foundation with really oily skin does not work for me. If anybody has any input on that, like how to avoid getting super oily throughout the day, I would really love to know that because I have yet to found, find the secret for it. Uh, so I usually will just use a concealer and this is from AOA, Shop Miss A. It's a dollar eighty-eight, dollar seventy-seven, I can't remember. It's really, really inexpensive and it can help hide certain things. So I usually will just apply it in the areas where I want a little bit of lightness, especially in the eyes and nose area. And as someone that has really dark hair, um, naturally, there's certain areas where I also shave my face, um, right here, right here, and my normal peach fuzz is a little bit darker than my skin tone, so this works pretty well at hiding that a little bit better, but I also dermaplane, so kind of shaving those peach fuzzies off and getting a nice really smooth texture to apply any kind of makeup to. And I'm using a damp blender so that it can help spread that a little bit more evenly. Oh, I got a kitty hair on it. So for this makeup look I'm going for something that's a little bit more natural. I'm not going to go really heavy on the makeup. When I'm working and I'm wearing a mask for the majority of the day, I tend to focus on the eyes because that's like the only thing that people see. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm going to do today. And despite watching a lot of makeup tutorials, I have not found out a way to make foundation really look good on me that doesn't look cakey. And after wearing it for such a short amount of time, I already look like I'm super, super oily. So I'm not... It's not that I'm against it, I just don't know how to do it. Um, but I don't apply a whole lot of, like, 
contouring or anything. But I think that the concealer has a natural enough look when you blend it in really nicely. And, that, and it also stays put pretty well. It does get oily, but at least it looks like when you get oily with foundation and it just gets to be really shiny and really cakey and then if you even dare to touch your face it just like leaves a smear <laughs> so I just don't wear it that often that's pretty much what I do for the base lately I have been digging two different types of eyeshadow that I use on my eyes and these I have mentioned in other videos are by Fora and Handayan. I'll try to find links for these. I had purchased these from AliExpress, so these are not sourced in the U.S. Um, AliExpress is very similar to Wish, where they come usually from China, and um, so the links don't always take you to the same places more than once. Um, so this is the Fora, and this is in the color Champagne, and this is Handayan. Hande uh, it doesn't have a color to it, I guess it's just number 11, but it is a almost transparent gold flakes. This is the finest glitter I have ever, ever seen, and even though it looks yellow in the pot, it doesn't really have that much pigmentation to it as much as that's just how finely the glitter is ground up into it and it looks it looks I think really nice so so for my skin type I think that champagne is a fairly close enough um, color and it's a pot so I just apply it with my fingers it gives a little bit of light to the top of the eyeshadow has a little bit of a glimmer to it and makes it nice and shiny. It's also simple to apply and you don't have to be very skilled with anything to get it to look this way. So I just kind of put it all over the top of the eyelid and then towards the inter- oops, these wrong lid. Towards the inner portion of the eye I will use the gold. So, gold. So it has a slight transitional color. And it kind of brightens the eyes a little bit. I really like that combination. It's warm, but for my particular skin tone, um, I have like a neutral undertone, uh, so I don't really favor a warm or a cooler. Um, yellow, I guess, would be somewhat indifferent but the champagne definitely has a little bit more of a warmer tint to it um, so that is the base that I start with and then for a liquid liner I use something like Ellie Colors and one dollar again it has a felt tip, a very pointed felt tip and See if I can get them symmetrical. It's always the challenge.
It's so hard to tell sometimes. I've had a little bit more practice with eye makeup, especially in the last year because with the masks, I mean, <laughs> it's like the only thing you see. So I've been spending a little bit more time with eye makeup just because I don't know, just because I like it. If you've ever applied wing eyeliner, you probably haven't found the learning curve of when to stop when you're trying so desperately to make it symmetrical, but the more you go, the thicker it gets, and then it just it just goes and goes and goes. So I think I'm going to stop right there. It might not be perfect, but we as humans, human beings, we are not perfect. So I'm okay with it not being perfect. Eyeliner. Um, LA Colors. Black. I can hear my cat snoring. <laughs> nim, nim. She used to make a lot more guest appearances uh, and audio bomb my videos when I used to record in a one-bedroom apartment because she would always be with me when I was recording, whereas now I can usually, in my house, I can usually lock her out. But today she's gonna, she's gonna participate. Gonna let that dry a little bit and if you are in a hurry get yourself one of these fancy jazzy fans that helps the drying process for blush I am going to use puff this is a liquid eyeliner or <laughs> liquid uh, gel blush it is one of the best ones I have found for my skin tones. I have tons of blushes. I have an obsession with blushes, but I never really find one that's a good shade for me. But this is a very nice pink. Whoa, that was way too much. Whoa. Let's see if I can tone that down a little. Oh, I'm going to be very pink today. I am wearing a pink sweater, so... And you can wipe this off pretty well, so if you do get a little too overzealous, it's easy to remove. And this was a knockoff of, I think the company was Glossier, Glossier, I don't know how it's pronounced, but I had seen it repeatedly on my Facebook timeline. It was like $18 per a little tube like this, and it's outside, outside of my price range, and I had gotten this off of AliExpress, I believe it was supposed to be a dupe for it, but I really like how it, uh, how it applies, I don't know if it's anything similar to the knock of, of the original brand, um, but it's really nice, so we're just going to leave it at that. And if you want a little more pop to your eyes, my eyes, I have a dupe, dupe of MAC, and it's brown eyeliner that comes out of a tube like this, and I typically will apply this 
in the corner in the waterline a little bit to kind of give that very that's the word I'm looking for, it's like a sharp brings the focus on the white portions of your eyes and if you hear water running that is my hydroponics tomato plant <laughs> oh I guess one other thing that I kind of wanted to mention um, for my skincare which I think is just a side effect of it. Um, I try to eat relatively healthy and clean. Not always. I'm mostly a vegetarian. Um, for the past couple of years I've been on and off vegetarian and vegan and about a year ago I started bringing fish back into my diet um, for protein when I was doing a little bit more weight training. Not weight training but a lot more exercise. It just helped with my joints a little bit better to have a little bit more protein. But I think with a clean diet, what you bring into your body <clears throat> also has a pretty significant impact on just how you look, how your skin can grow, whether or not you have good nutrition. Um, I don't smoke, I don't drink any longer. Um, those sorts of behaviors, I imagine, probably have a factor on how people's skin ages. Another thing that I've kind of started doing, and I don't know if I'm going to stick with it or if I like it, but I'm going to take that pencil and I'm going to dip it into the gold eyeshadow pot and then apply it because that doesn't really have a whole lot of color or pigmentation it does have a little bit of gleam to it so the pigment pigment from the eye pencil will be applied but you'll also get kind of that shimmer of the gold too And I think, I think that's probably it for the makeup. It works good for going to work because it doesn't take that long. And by the time I leave work at the end of the day, it's going to be a hot mess anyways. So, eh. <laughs> Some lip oil. Um, this is Oh Honey, AOA, Shop Miss A, $1.88 something. And I would normally wear that at work for a moisturizer, but it doesn't have any pigment, so if you get it all up in the inside of your mask, it's more of a discomfort, but it's not its not like you get lipstick all on the inside. But for a recording, I am going to uh, put on Bliss AOA, a dollar, shopmessay.com. And it's kind of a nude color. I have a really hard time with lipstick. I don't know if it's because I'm on the phone all day, if I'm constantly touching my face or my mouth or whatever, but I can never keep it in place. Lip liner would probably help, but it's just not really been that important lately because we got masks on all day anyways, so I just don't even really care that much for, for lipstick at the moment. So, all right, I am going to go over my script and then start recording that, recharge my batteries, and that is the skincare slash get ready with me before I record. Although it's not really skincare because I'm not gonna, I didn't do whole skincare before putting makeup on. Anyhow, that's my routine. <laughs> I will see you all shortly in the next video.